Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we are at CES 2017. This is the pre-show, the real uh, fun starts tomorrow, but we're at Pepcom tonight. And I want to mention our CES coverage is sponsored by Silicon Dust, the makers of the HD Home Run. It's my favorite cord cutting device. We've done a lot of content on this device. You can uh, bring in your cable channels or you can bring over, over the air content, put it on your computer network and do whatever you want with it. Uh, check out the full playlist down below. So what we're doing today is just uh, going to be roaming around Pepcom. I'm going to look for some obscure stuff to show you in this video, but what, well, what I'll be also doing uh, is collecting footage of different product categories that I'll compile uh, when I get back to talk about some trends we're seeing in PCs and uh, home theater devices and everything else. So stay tuned. we got a lot of stuff to come, and we're going to take a look around the show floor now. All right, so we're here with uh, John at uh, Gorilla Glass, and if you have a mobile phone, there's a good chance you probably have Gorilla Glass on it now. There's a new Gorilla Glass that you're going to show us here, right? That's correct, yes. And which, which one is this? This is Corning Gorilla Glass 5. This is better than 4? This is better than 4. Better than 3? Uh, better than 3, yes. <laughs> so what are we going to do here? We've got, we've got some sandpaper, and then... Yeah, so what we've done with Corning Gorilla Glass 5 is improve the damage resistance even further, and we're trying to drive drop height survivability up to selfie levels. And uh, so what we have is a demonstration here to simulate that drop event where we'll impact on 180 grit silicon carbide sandpaper. And that really uh, replicates those sharp contact surfaces that you see like concrete and asphalt, things along those lines. So, what we, so we're going to start with another piece of glass first though, right? What we have here is an alternative aluminum silicate material. We're going to simulate a drop inside of this pendulum that really simulates the impact energy of about a one meter drop or about waist height. And so I'm going to go ahead and drop this sample. And what you can see is that that sample's broken. And that's about that waist height kind of drop impact. You notice you bent the glass there, but I guess that's to replicate what happens with a phone. The force is completely right, yes. We, when you drop the phone, actually will flex. And so we're simulating the flexure by pre-bending the glass. All right, so now we got the Gorilla Glass 5. Yep. So we're going to Gorilla Glass 5. And this is also bent, right? This is also bent the same way. And we're going to take this all the way up to the max, which is four times more impact energy than what we saw with the previous drop. We'll go ahead and let that one go. See, it's still intact and not broken. This, and this gets up near that, that selfie height, around 1.6, 1.7 meters. Might get a little scuffed up, but you're not going to have a, a break. Not going to break. Not going to break. Very cool. And, and which phones are these in now? So currently, uh, we have public announcements with Samsung, Oppo, HTC, Asus, and Acer. Very cool. And what makes, what, how do you strengthen glass? What's the, is it obviously the materials that go into the glass that make that happen? How do you strengthen it? Yeah, so it's actually the glass composition itself. It's an alkali containing alumina silicate. goes through an ion exchange process, which helps to put compression in the glass. And that compression helps keep the flaws from basically breaking and carrying forward. And that actually helps prevent damage from propagating in the glass and fracture eventually. Very cool. So we can be more careless with our phones now. Yeah. Just, Thanks for your time. Cool. Yeah. All right, so we're looking now at the SolPad. This is a self-contained solar panel inverter and battery. They say it's got a 600 watt hour battery, which should uh, be enough to power a TV or a computer or something. You probably get a couple of hours out of it, maybe you know some good usage at night with it. You can hook them up in line with each other as well. Uh, what I just found interesting about it is that it just has everything in one unit. So if you ever tried to hook up solar before, you have to buy all the pieces, the battery, the inverter, and everything else. Uh, this one has it uh, all built in. And the starting price in this one is going to be $13.99 pre-orders in May. All right, so we're taking a look now at something called the SID. And this is a little uh, 3D camera. They got it on a gimbal right now. Um, it's going to shoot at uh, 2K. And I took a look at it with the uh, cardboard a little while ago. It actually looks pretty decent. It's got a nice sharp image. And I was pretty impressed with the image quality. We'll have to take a closer look at it in the next uh, couple of weeks when it comes out. This is a Kickstarter, right? So... It's gonna be 299 bucks, but on Kickstarter in a month, we're gonna sell it below 200 bucks. It's gonna be 199 bucks. I guess what they're shooting for with this is to have a Wi-Fi uh, streaming capability on it, so you can uh, have it go up to Facebook Live and a few other services as well, and uh, get 3D imagery. So it's not gonna be a VR camera; it's 3D. And what's nice is that as these sensors get better, I think the 3D is going to look a lot better than the VR is going to look like. So I'm eager to try this out when, uh, when one is available. So uh, maybe we'll do a Kickstarter and I'll let you know what I think of it when it comes out. All right, so we're going to take a look now at some wireless charging. And, and a few viewers wrote in to me about where's wireless charging going. So we're looking at the Air Fuel Alliance right now. What they've got here is a, uh, a, essentially a bench. And you can see that there is a, a unit underneath here. So what's happening is, is that when this phone is placed whoops, on top of the bench, um, it will begin charging. So it's able to charge 
uh, through a surface like this. And they've also said to me, that, we'll have to test this of course, but um, there's no limit to the amount of power that they can transmit. So they have uh, in their suite, maybe we'll check out their suite later this week, um, they apparently have the ability to charge cars with this technology also. So there's a lot more flexibility than traditional wireless charging. And maybe if it's adopted, your laptop could do that too. But I thought that was pretty cool that you could uh, have this much distance between the uh, charger and the phone and still have that phone charged. Here's another cool thing I found at the Lenovo booth. This is called the multimedia controller. It's going to cost about 55 bucks in the spring. Now check this out. It looks like a little keyboard, which it is, but I can take my fingers here. Uh, you can use it like a mouse, but it's also a little multimedia keyboard. So if you wanted to wait, you know, wait to control your home theater, it's a nice little small keyboard that has mouse functionality built into the keys which is really nice and compact. I can't wait to try this one out too. All right, so now we're checking out the air bar. Let me put my bag down here. And uh, what this does is it turns your non-touchscreen laptop into a touchscreen. So we've got a, looks like a MacBook Air here. They've got a 13.3 inch touch bar on here and I can just touch the screen and draw on the screen, even though this is not a touchscreen uh, MacBook, which is pretty cool. So that's a neat little feature there uh, that this device adds. So I guess this one costs about uh, $99 for the Mac, $69 for Windows. They said it's a little harder to get the Mac version working like you're seeing here, so they charge a little extra for it. But really, it's just this bar here that you put down in front of your screen, and you can start uh, using it as a touch screen. And it seems to be working pretty decently as I uh, click through this. So if you really wanted to add touch functionality to your non-touch laptop, might be one way to do it. Just make sure you take it out of the laptop before you close the lid. And you know I love docks because I, I need them because I'm a Mac user. So this is their uh, new Thunderbolt 3 dock. There's no price on this one yet. Uh, but what's unique about it is that it does power delivery and it can do 170 watts. And one of the things that I've seen with a lot of these docks in the past is that they've, they're good for those smaller laptops, but not the big ones. So 170 watts to power the dock and the laptop uh, is enough to really powered like those big Dells that I have and the uh, MacBook Pro as well, which I thought was pretty cool. So that was interesting. And then uh, this thing looked pretty cool also. This is, so I'm an Apple Watch user. I always forget to bring the cable with me when I'm out and about. So they've got a little battery uh, with a USB port and an Apple Watch charger built in, which I thought was pretty cool. So uh, neat little stuff from Belkin. They've always got these cool things that solve problems here. And another thing that's kind of neat here, because as you know, my biggest complaint with the iPhone 7 was that I can't listen and charge at the same time. This is a dual lightning cable um, that will allow you to put your headphones in and charge the phone at the same time. It's not a standard headphone jack, so you have to use the uh, earbuds that have the lightning connector, but it does kind of solve a problem there. So lots of neat little, little gadgets here at the Belkin booth. And HP also showed us their Sprocket printer, which is a, a little instant photo printer that prints out these little stickers. And what's cool about it is that it's, it's all thermals. There's no ink involved. It actually uses a thermal process to uh, take photos off your phone and uh, get them printed out onto these stickers. Pretty cool stuff. 129 bucks for the printer. Then you got to buy the, uh, the sticker packs over time. So that's just a few of the things that I felt were kind of interesting here at uh, Pepcom. There's a lot of stuff here, so many things that we can never get to all of it and keep you uh, awake for it all. So I tried to just curate a few things that I know all of you uh, found interesting. And this is the kind of approach I want to take to CES. So I'd love to get your feedback as to what you thought of this video and whether or not uh, I should do it this way or do a mix of interviews and some other stuff also. So give me some feedback down below. That'll help me over the next three days give you some content from CES that you might find of interest. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.